This is the EF200 edge finishing machine. It's a diamond polisher utilizing a diamond tool to finish the edge of plastic. And with this machine, we can literally take a saw cut piece of plastic and turn it into a finished piece through one pass through the machine, as long as it, you have a fairly decent table cut. So what I'm gonna do first for you is show you exactly how we turn the machine on and run a piece through, and you can see for yourself the quality of the sample. First thing you would do, Pull the emergency switch out and pull the start switch. We have a little momentary switch here, which you would click once for start reset. You can turn the feed on, turn the spindle on, and then we can turn the feed speed up so we can make our adjustments there. So now let me just turn on the vacuum here. What I want to show you now is an actual cut on this part. Here I marked an arrow to show you the saw cut edge that we're starting with. All we're going to do is we're going to take it over here, place it down on the rail, and I'm just going to slide it in, keeping it in contact with the rail, and let it go. You never want to hold down the part as it's going over the actual cutter, which is right about here. Next thing I'd like to show is something that I'm commonly asked a lot is can you gang up or stack parts together? And the answer is yes you can. Here I have a couple pieces of plexi. What I'm gonna do is run them together for you. The machine will automatically adjust to any size up to three quarter inch thick, whether it's a stack or a single piece. Okay, basically just to introduce the various uh, uh, dials and controls that's involved in this machine, you have your main power switch right here, okay, and this is a stop switch and also can activate as an emergency switch as well. It's a push-pull operator, pull to start, you'll see the light come on, push to stop. Now what you have down here is a speed setting. This is how you can control the feed speed, which is actually a uh, something that you would need to do depending on what type of material you're cutting. Uh, say if you're doing polycarbonate, you would want to run this machine about as quickly as you can, which would be about roughly about 12 feet per minute. Or if, say if you're doing acrylic with a diamond cutter, you want to go right about there, which would be about three feet per minute. Down here, you have your toggle switches, one to control the feed on and off, one to control the spindle on and off, and here you have another safety feature. In order to start this machine, every time you have to click the start reset switch once. It's a snapback switch, it'll snap back into position, but it'll close the contacts and the machine will be ready to run. As you can see. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to remove the blade from the machine. Because after a while it's gonna get to the point where the blade's gonna get dull and it's gonna need to be returned back to the shop for resharpening. So in order to get the blade off, it's actually a fairly simple process. And let me just show you how that's done. First, what we want to do is we want to loosen this bolt right here, just a little bit. We don't need to take it out. Now we can swing the arm away. And you'll see the little trigger finger came out from the notch. Underneath here is that little limit switch. And what that is, that's actually a safety switch. So in the event that the arm ever opened up on its own, this machine would turn itself off immediately going to come over here to this side and, then, and you can see on this side here we have a flathead screw that lags down this particular side here. We can remove this one fully. What I normally do is just put it right back in there and we can swing this arm out of the way. Now we can get at our cutter and what we're going to want to do here now for the cutter 
So I'm going to open up the front door so we can get at the spindle and hold the spindle while we loosen the cutter. The cutter itself is held by a little bolt right through the center and the cutter sits on a taper of the spindle and when, when it's compressed in it creates a tight seal and this cutter will not move on the spindle. So in order to break that seal what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the other side of the machine now Okay. And what we're going to do is put my T-wrench right here on the screw and then underneath here on the motor itself there's two wrench flats which is 17 millimeter wrench or any adjustable wrench will work with and I'm going to use it to hold the spindle in place. Now I can loosen up this bolt just a little bit. You don't need to take it all the way out right away yet. Now in order to break the seal what we do is we, we use a sort of a twisting process. And the best way to do that is to mobilize the cutter. You can take this T-wrench right here, place it in a hole on the side, and bring it up over here till it lodges up against this rail. Now underneath, I have my wrench still on the wrench flat, and this is gonna provide me with enough leverage that I can just push this way, and now the cutter, as you can see, has broken free. Go ahead and remove the entire screw plus the washer. You can set that aside and we've just taken out the cutter. Okay, and there we go. And there's the taper that it sits on inside. Okay, one of the benefits of this machine too, uh, which I probably haven't mentioned before, but I should, is, is the fact that you can easily set it up on any tabletop shop table that you have anywhere. I mean, you can even literally, if you want, place it on a small cart and move it to any location that's that's convenient for you in the shop or or near a particular outlet that you have because it does run on 220 single phase. So it's very portable. The machine itself is only 95 pounds so it's it, it's very easy to get around and set up or break down and repack if you need to move somewhere. Okay now what I'd like to do is to get back to uh, the cutter itself, the removal of the cutters, I want to show you very briefly what we have inside and what the process is from this angle here to remove the cutter. So what we're looking at right now is the spindle motor itself and here's the bracket in which it's mounted on. And this particular frame here is stationary, but the motor, the bracket here attached to the back of the motor, this thicker part, is actually held in by two screws and they're on a slot. And if you notice this handle down here, this gives you some indication of what's going to happen here. This is how we adjust our height. Okay, so now going back to removal of the cutter itself, if you look inside here, this is where the shaft is, and there's two shaft flats. You can take the wrench and place it on just like that. Okay, and what we'll do here is break the seal. Now I can go ahead and remove the cutter. Okay, the first thing we want to do now in, in putting on the new cutter, we're going to take our cutter out and make sure that everything is clean. So what you may want to do is just make sure there's no chips or dirt on the inside of the taper. Okay. Now what we can do is we can come over and place it right down here on the spindle. You want to be very careful now about never touching the diamonds with the wrench or anything. It's a very sharp but brittle edge. Even though it's diamond, it's easy to pearl over the edge because it's lapped to such a fine degree um, that any little nick of any sort could, could create a dull finish for you. So you want to be very careful around your diamond. Now what we have is we have the cutter sitting on there and I'm going to go ahead and show you a little trick here that I do that will make removing this cutter easier. You can see here we have a little hole that we used to lodge up against here to break the seal. Now what we want to do in order to make the removal a lot easier for yourself is take that particular hole, bring it over here so it's just on an off angle coming out this way from the rail. 
while in the meantime ensuring that the cutter is sitting with the two wrench flats coming out just like this. So the wrench you want just like this in a centered position. Okay, that way when we go to actually brace up against the rail we have plenty of travel down here with our hands to break it free. If it was in an off location where you couldn't get at it and you had to break it up you might have to remove the pipes in order to do it. So this will make it a lot easier for you. So we'll go ahead and we'll get that angle set just like that. Now I can go ahead and start to bolt this in. Okay, I'll get that set and I'll put the wrench right back on here. Okay, hold it firmly in place and seat that nicely. There we go. So now it's all set. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to ensure that the cutter itself is set up to the correct height. So how we're going to go about that is we're going to use a depth indicator. Okay, just basically to show you how the cutter itself is set up because this is very important in the manner in which you, you would set this thing up to get the correct height is you need to realize that this number here 0 0.200 actually stands for two hundred thousandths and what that's going to tell you is that the top of the natural diamond which is right here is two hundred thousandths above the top of this hub that gives us an exact reference point in which we can set up the height of this cutter but yet we never need to put the dial indicator on the tip of the diamond itself. Therefore we avoid any opportunity to damage the cutter and provide yourself with a dull cut. So now that we know that 200 thousandths is the t from the top of this tall diamond here to the top of this hub, we can go ahead and begin to make our height adjustment. So what I'll do is I'll take this tool here and I'm gonna get it so it's just perpendicular to the feed. Make sure that the in-feed rail is clear of any chips, debris, dirt. Same thing too with the, with the uh, indicator base. Make sure that that's nice and clean because we want a good fit. We're dealing with thousands of an inch here so even the smallest amount of dirt or debris can affect your cut. So what I'll do is I'll bring this indicator over here, place it on, and you'll notice that the tip of the indicator is right here on the in-feed rail. Okay, and if we come over here now and look at the dial, we'll see, we'll, I'll show you how to get it set up for the adjustment, and then we'll make our actual measurement and then adjust the height from there. So now what we've done is, as you can see, we have the indicator on the in-feed rail, and what you would want to do Sorry for blocking this. What you want to make sure is that we spin the dial around till the needle is up with the zero. And we can lock it into place here with this little ring right here. Okay, so you can see now that the dial is exactly at zero. So there's our zero reference point. Now the ideal cut is going to be basically around 20, 22 thousandths, 18 thousandths. A lot of it has to do with what the difference is between your two rails, which are offset in height. Usually around 15 to 18 thousandths. In this particular case, the rails are set about 21 thousandths, so I'll probably go to 22 thousandths. I want to give a little leeway so it doesn't hit the opposite rail, which would create a step in the part. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to just lift the needle up a little, just a little like that, Drag the indicator over and I want to bring it down right here to this side because this is where our cut's coming from. Now as you can see, each revolution of the dial is a hundred thousandths. And we know if we want say like a twenty thousandths cut, that needle's going to have to go all the way around once for a hundred thousandths. There we go, another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 almost 190. That's, that's showing right there about 11 thousandths of the tall diamond is above this rail. So we need to make an adjustment in our height. And you're going to want to do this every time you change the tool around to make sure that you create the correct height. We know that our height is off a little, but you need to make the adjustment. And how we go about doing that is right here on the back of this motor mount, 
you have two bolts parallel to one another, okay, one on either side of this bracket here, okay, and they're lock bolts and they hold the position, the uh, spindle motor in place. So what we can do is we can go ahead, put our wrench in, just like that, into the bolts, loosen them up a little bit. So what I've done now is I've loosened up the second bolt as well, and now we're ready to go ahead and make our height adjustment. What we have here is a knob, okay, and this is our elevation uh, knob here. So if I want to adjust the height up, okay, I just turn the knob up a little until I get to about, eh, we'll set it right here to about 22 thousandths, okay, and that's going to be a pretty decent cut. You can go ahead and snug them up a little bit, okay, keeping an eye on the indicator itself. Okay, and as we go in and tighten these things down into position, you just need to be aware it, the reading can creep a little bit, by say maybe a thousandths. So you may want to go maybe a thousandths more than what you want to actually set at. And then just allow it, as you tighten it in, to creep into position. Okay, and that's it, very easy. We're now set at about 20 thousandths. Okay, so we've gone around the dial 180 thousandths for a depth, and that's telling you now that 20 thousandths of the tallest diamond is above the infeed rail, and we're now ready to make our cut. So we can go ahead, take off the indicator, shut the front door, have a little lock ring here, tighten this into place. Okay, and now what we can do is we can bring our swing arms into position. So here I am bringing the swing arms over, we we'll go ahead, and this is basically just the reverse of what it was when we opened it, as you can see. Tighten that in, bring this arm over here, making sure that the trigger finger goes under, and then we'll go ahead and lock this down, and now you can begin your production.